Hello, people! It's time to do the red of Dark Ascension. And with me is Julian Boer. None other than. No, the one and only. The one and only. I'm pretty sure I am the only. Man. If you Google my name, it's Man. exclusively. Legend. And then there's like one for Orlando, Florida, but I think that's just because I played in Star City, Orlando. So. You, you made that town. <laughs> Basically. Put it on the map. All right, so... You have your spoiler up, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, because I d didn't send it to you. Or <laughs> we did not prepare well. Let's jump into it, though. Have you, have you seen the spoiler? Uh, I, like, glanced over it, but I didn't All right. look that close. All right, I have not seen any of this, so... So you're just in the dark? Yeah, yeah like, I saw, like, the first, you know, 10 or 15 cards or whatever, but besides sure. that, that these, this is my initial reaction, so... Bear with me if I say something stupid. Which you will. I'm sure. And we start with the flip card. Not another Tormented Pariah. Is. God, I hate this card. Yeah. I mean, like, most decks have an artifact. But it's still, like, Tormented Pariah barely, barely gets played. Yeah. I mean, like... I don't know. At I, least, I mean, I don't think this is getting picked high at all. No. Ever. At least it's got, like, some utility to it. The, yeah, I mean, it's a cool card. Yeah, the Torments of Pariah, though, it just, like, its resemblance to Torments of Pariah makes me hate it. Because I hate <laughs> yeah, Torments of Pariah that much. Like, oh, you added more text to that, okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and made it uncommon. Yeah, at least I don't have to see it as often, because it's uncommon. <laughs> it's, it's an upside. Alpha yeah, Brawl costs a million mana... Just actual plague wind. Modern day. See, when I see this card, it reminds Ooh. me of the Jeff, the Jeff Cunningham insurrection thing. <laughs> <laughs> just put it face down on the table, slide it across, let your opponent peek. He'll slide it back across, quietly pick up his cards. We're, There's no need to make a scene. Yeah, we're gentlemen here. There's no need to make a scene. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's about that. Yeah, that's cool. Blood feud. I think I was watching Brad stream and he said that this card like unplug. I think it was Brad. I don't remember this card who exactly, but I think it's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's not like amazing. Like it's very rare yeah. that you're gonna be able to get a clean two for one. But I mean like you're gonna be able to kill a utility guy a hundred percent of the time, and kill yeah. like a medium sized guy if you need it. Like you're not gonna be able to kill their best creature, but you're, yeah, you're never gonna like kill their two best creature. Oh, I mean right. you can, but it's like pretty rare that that happens. I mean the problem is there's a, a, kind of a lot of high toughness guys. Yeah, that, set, that is true. Which is the big thing, but at the same time it's like against any green deck, especially with like ambush viper. That's oh yeah, yeah. If you time. get like ambush viper or like fen snake or uh, patrician or yeah, 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 anything that kills that auto kills, then it's like a complete blowout. But I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I think it, it's like it's like a fairly high pick. Yeah, I'm I mean, I'm pretty sure it's really good. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yes, we will out. see. Burning oil. This is a weird effect for Dav only being able to hit attacking and blocking creatures. It's gonna be like awkward having to play around neck snap the, from yeah the red right neck snap yeah yeah. It's kind of interesting that they didn't do, like, white and red flashback, but... Yeah. I don't know, it's a cool card. Yeah, it's cool. I think... I mean, that adds, like, a new dynamic, attacking into red. Because there's... It's, like, only white has stuff like this right yeah, now, exactly. really, that I can think of, but... Except, like, time shift... Or color shifted stuff. Like, neck snaps yeah. are exclusively white. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, Curse of Bloodletting... Dude, there's so many curses in this set. Or at least there yeah, were in black. There were like five of them. I was expecting them to kind of dial back on that, but I like that they're doing cool stuff with it at least. Although this, yeah, this card seems... is pretty awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if it costs less. If it was more aggressively costed, it would be insane. But yeah. at five, it's like, in limited, you'd rather have a... <clears throat> like a... Something to have board presence rather than... Yeah. This. Yeah, it seems Actually, like it's like okay in a red blue deck if you have a bunch of flyers or something, but other than that it's like super win more. Yeah. Yeah. Erdwall Ripper. Just add one to Blood Craze Neonite. Um oh, but you actually get the block with 
Yeah. I mean, that's what makes Neonate bad. Uh, but I don't think I, that I don't this know. is... I don't think this card's good. Yeah, man. I don't think this card's good either, but at least you don't have to suicide it every turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Faithless Looting. Oh, this is, this is yeah, one of the... Yeah, you've probably seen this one. Yeah, this is one of the few cards I saw. Study. I think this was the first spoiled card. It is freaking bonkers. This card is so good. Like, I think that even the people that are saying it's good don't realize how good it is. Yeah. I mean, careful studies, like, been insane in the past. And yeah. With flashback, it's totally, like, people don't realize how good flashback is. Yeah, it's so good. And then, and the environment now, with all the flashback cards... Like yeah, exactly. In standard and limited, and then there's a ton. Yeah, and then flashback. in Legacy Dredge, this thing <clears throat> is insane. Cause like it gives you a longer game. Well, not not even you just play the LED package. Sure. So like you play your LED or whatever, and your one. Oh, land. I guess you can LED and flash it back. Yeah, yeah. and then you so you just play like you, breakthrough in this. You cast yeah you cast this. Or break through, and we'll crack your LED, dredge off of it, and then f with that mana, flash this back and dredge two more. Like <laughs> they're probably dead. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, this alone with LED is like way better than breakthrough is. Yeah, right? for sure. Like yeah. the um, I actually the the dredge guy I lost to last weekend had t uh two or three desperate ravings in his deck. For exactly this reason, just so he could flash it back off oh, yeah, of yeah, the sure. off of an LED, so he would he was playing like a Sun Titan. You know, he's playing the full out combo version, so he had yeah. a Sun Titan to get back the LED and then LED to crack <laughs> for the ravings. Oh yeah, that's pretty insane. And yeah, so he did the same turn, and you don't need to play an otherwise dead card in Desperate Ravings anymore because this thing is good on its own and then gives you this awesome yeah. backup. Yeah, 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 this card's freaking bonkers. Fires of Undeath. Good card. Yep, solid limited card. It's like, I mean, it's again like I. What was I the feel um, like people won't value this high enough even. Well, like, I mean, like, there's precedent. Even initially, so. you should think it's good, but like, especially with something like Grasp, I didn't even think that was very good when I first saw it. And Tim was like. I don't know, that's a pretty good card to have Flashback on. Yeah. And it's, like, one of the best blue cards. Yeah. Because I, I never played with Flashback before, so I had no idea. That's exactly what I was going to say, is I think that there's precedent set for this, because this is basically an inverse strangling soot. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So I think people are going to know how good it is just because of that, but I agree that people in general don't realize how valuable Flashback is. Uh, <laughs> like, especially this format... You get to a lot of games where, like, you're not necessarily in top deck mode, but, like, the board kind of stabilizes and you're both kind of, like, yeah. just ducking and weaving at each other and not actually, like, no, neither of you can really attack or or play something in your hand or whatever. And it's all about who draws, you know, the removal and the card drawing and... and this set more than most. I mean, like the Zendikar and like core set, like the, the list, this last core set. The, those sets didn't really play out like that way. But this set, yeah, I agree with that. This set, unless somebody has travel preparations, <laughs> I feel like a lot of yeah, games play out kidding. that way. A travel prep or a feel like you miss a lander up and they have a werewolf or something. Yeah, you know, like yeah. a villagers or whatever. There's always this stalker cleaver draw, and you're like, yeah, we're not even yeah. playing magic. We don't even talk about that. That's yeah. <laughs> Flare of the hate bound. A seen this yet. It's a sweet name, I mean... That's cool art. It it's is tails cool on art. fire. It's pretty badass. That's pretty good. I don't understand it. If something, like, undies, or you... Oh, you, you just know, kill something. <laughs> or yeah, domo. I mean, it's, it's like FDK-ish. That's cool. But it, not when you initially play it. Yeah, that's cool. Just on the back side. And 4-2 yeah. is, like, the perfect... Power yeah, toughness I mean, ratio. This card's awesome. Four, four kills everything on the ground for the most part. Yeah, exactly. And it comes back and deals five, so... I'm very happy that it's a rare. I, like, this would probably be oh, too yeah, good at that uncommon. Was uncommon. That would be totally retarded. Yeah. Very happy that's rare. Because that is a card that they could make. That's like, um... 
What was the time spiral uh, flame tongue called? Yeah, I was just gonna say. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Fire. Fire Maka. Fire Maka. Right? Yeah. yeah. Now I want to Google it just to make sure. Yeah, I think it's yeah, Fire Maka. Yeah, that's what it's called. You know, it's like burning jaw kavu, or There's a million of them. Yeah, <laughs> fling reprint, whatever. It's cool. Yeah, I don't... It's cool I mean, with it's undying. Cool with undying. Yeah, I agree with that. But and we... I don't, I, I don't know like the applications with that. I don't know how much undying there is at yeah, um, yeah. limited because you need a lot. You need like four creatures. I feel like to make fling. I feel like between good. undying and morbid, you'll be able to get enough things to make it worth it. Oh, sure, Morbid, too, I suppose. It also depends on how many, like, high-power creatures there are. Because, like, you want to trade up with it, right? Yeah, Like, yeah, you yeah. don't want to trade your 3-drop for their 3-drop and you used your fling. You want to trade, like, your 2 or 3-drop for their 4 or 5-drop. I want to fling a flare. Just light them up. <laughs> Take 9. Up please. top! Forge Devil... It's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. It's like Blister Beetle-esque. Yeah, it's cool that it has to hit something, so like you can't just run it out there on turn one. Yeah. But was being Bl able to... Blister Beetle was a must, too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like it cost two, so it was less awkward. This yeah. thing actually costs one, so like you're definitely able to cast it and not going to cast it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh... I think one power, one mana cards are so underrated and limited in, in every environment. Yeah. So it's good to see a one mana card that has applications in the early game, but is still good late. And yeah, I mean, it, it lets you, like, sort of trade up sometimes. Right, right. And then <clears throat> the fact that it's one mana, like, when people talk about mana curves, one drops fit, or they're, they're like water, where they, like, just fill any gaps that you have. Yeah. So, like, if you have a bunch of threes and only fours, then your one drops are four drops. If you have a bunch of threes and fours, then and no fives, then you know you can play a four and it on five. And then yeah. with werewolves, especially being able to do two things in a turn is extra valuable. So that's pretty cool. And I suppose you could always just like have it kill itself for morbid, right? Yeah, I guess. If like you if really it, needed if it, it comes down to it, you need to get real scrappy. Well, I mean, like <laughs> some of the morbid effects are like banshee. Like that's yeah, yeah, well worth so an extra good, card. That's totally fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, heckling fiends. The art on this is ridiculous. I'm like trying. They're like holding. They're holding up human hands on is, stage. Are, the, are those human hands? They yeah, look like so. they look like Mickey Mouse gloves. That's like serious heckling. It looks like um it looks like the gloves from that episode of SpongeBob SquarePants where they go to Gloveland. You know what I'm <laughs> that's, talking that's about. Such a deep reference. <laughs> um, and it's a cool card. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it, the fact that it's a creature is so sweet. Like that's the curse is not very good. That makes them attack every right, time. Right, right. Just because it doesn't develop your board I've, at all. But I've like boarded it in a couple times, and one time when I yeah, was. I've, I was Skyping on Brad's stream, and we, like, were talking about how awesome it is, because, like, he, he like, loves red, he loved red-green at the beginning of the format, um, and obviously it's awesome there when your creatures are, like, when your creatures are guaranteed to curve better than theirs, you know, your three is yeah. a 2-3 when theirs is a 2-2, two, two. your drop is a 3-3 three, three when theirs is a 2-3 or whatever, and your five drops a 4-4 four, four and theirs is a 3-3. Three, three then, like, he said that he would just crush people with it, but, like, now that you actually are able to, like, target things down individually and and the card is fine on its own, yeah, this card's pretty awesome, and it it's awesome in, like, that it really creates cool game states. Like, it's got a lot of play to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of bad players will mess up, and a lot of good players will do really cool things with it, and I like cards like that. And normally, I don't, know, I don't know how much I, I'm like trying to figure out where it stands versus Alluring Siren because I love that card. Yeah, Alluring Siren is really good. I this, mean, the fact that this costs three mana is like pretty awkward compared to that, but right. But then it also fights more, and you two, can two for three, yeah, and you can activate it twice in a turn, which will come up in like Alpha Strike situations. Yeah, 
yeah, it's it's. I think it's just like too different. But I like that um that thing that I already said. But then also that it's a simple enough card, right? Like there's only like six yeah. words on it, but yeah, it. Like, it's so complex. Exactly. Like normally, the actual game state. Yeah, normally to get a card that bad players will mess up with or underutilize, and good players <laughs> will own you with, you need to put a lot of words on the card. Because nobody wants to read all that. All that text. <laughs> exactly. It's tough. No kidding. Even fling is like. Uh. If I wanted to read a book, <laughs> I would have downloaded an audio book. Okay. All right. I'm American. All right, so Hellrider, 3-3 three, three for 4, haste, that attacks, and pings. I mean, that's good. Yeah, it's neat. 3-3 three, three haste for 4. Is... Well, the red creatures are so crappy that this is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like and... Now, when when you're serving into that bell ringer, at least... A little more value. <laughs> yeah, you're not just throwing away your guy. Creatures dying. You're not like you're not like at best trading it for an unruly mob. <laughs> you know. I like I like that all these rares seem to be like fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're not no. They're none just of the like rares I've seen so far. Are like, what were they thinking? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, even the the eight drop plague wind is like. It's eight. eight. Eight is a lot of mana. Yeah. The format. Yeah, and there's like that three counter spells like, and night terrors and yeah, like the eight drop and rise the Eldrazi is insane. But in this format, I feel like it's a little worse than yeah a slower format. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I'm definitely a fan of not having every single rare immediately win the game. I'm sure Ben is like ecstatic that Magic's going coming back to this. Yeah. Um, another flip card. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's just a decent... It's not like... Yeah, it's just a good guy. Flipped. I mean... Yeah, it's just a fine it's okay. guy. Yeah. Just a guy. It's just a man. Alright, moving on. I mean, two drops are pretty awesome, in general. Yeah, that's true. Increasing Vengeance... Uh, fork your own. Oh, you can only do your own thing, and then flashback, and it copies it twice. That's kind of sweet. That is pretty sweet. I don't know what applications it's gonna have, but yeah, I don't either. It's gonna be like a super awesome know. casual card, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I like the I like the flashback it gives you more. Yeah, that is really cool. Theme to the set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yep. not really a theme, but it's like a sub theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like something new they're doing. I, I. I can't remember what the other ones were, but they were sweet, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're all awesome. Yeah. Um, Blade Master, Double Strike. Double Strike is really interesting in this set. There's a lot of equipment and pump and, yeah, like, instant speed burn. Cause that's, that's, like, my thing with uh, the Hellhound is half the time I use his ability, it's, like... With a geist to like double up a geist flame, or to like take down a four four with an unmorbid brimstone volley, or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like double strike, first strike period is awesome because you can do stuff like that, and then double strike with equipment is insane. And then obviously and the, and the fact that like if they're not blocking, this is exactly <laughs> yeah. It's a three three right away. They're just completely dead. Like a three three first striker in this format is it's just kind of, I absurd. Mean, it's, like, it's good, but it's very balanced because I mean the fact that it's a one one obviously. I know but... I, I know for sure that uh, I'm gonna lose to this into crossway vampires. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that so many times. <laughs> It's like, oh, and, oh, I can't Ooh. block, and now Ooh, I lose. I'm dead. That's, interesting, that's interesting. They're going to curve, like, Interloper into this, into Crossword <laughs> Vampires, and they're going to have the Fury. <laughs> it's going to be bad. It's tough. Yeah. It's a tough game out there. But again, another, like, rare that's obviously very good. But not, like, overpowering. It's right. not going to take over a game by itself. Yep. I mean, it, like, it can, but it won't often. Right. And this is, like. this is, like, way cooler in the way that it interacts than uh, the Marauders. 
in uh, this last set. The uh, the yeah, Rorix yeah, guy. Yeah, Falcon Wrath Marauders. Yeah, because yeah, like, like, uh, like flying is. Yeah, haste. like it has haste. So like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> not attack with your flyers, and then yeah. once you once it hits once, which it does immediately because it has haste, then it's a four four. And it's bigger than everything else in the entire f history of the format. And it can't be killed by anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like, I like this card a lot more than Marauders, and I don't I don't think Marauders is at all imbalanced. It's just really really good, and it definitely is more prone to taking over a game than this card. Yeah, I agree. Markov Warlord, six mana haste. Yeah, this card's sweet. Oh, it, I remember seeing this one. This thing's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's like a cool uncommon finisher. Yeah, and we were just talking about how all the red creatures suck. So to see an actual like monster, yeah. like all of these have been decent. Yeah, like, good. Yeah, but like they're all quality, but like their bodies are just small, you know. Yeah, it's good to see some sort of beefy body on it. Yeah, even if they're even if you're just like you're four four and whatever can't block surfer four. I mean. That's, like, fine on its own. Like, a 6-drop 4-4 haste would be good in a format seven years ago. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I like that card. Ooh, another flip card. More cleavage. There's a lot of cleavage in Magic these days. Yeah, it really is. Uh, oh, no! Not another Tormented Pariah! <laughs> hey, it's a 5-5, five five, right? All right, at least, at least it settle, flips. Settle down. But the ability isn't even that great! I mean, it's yeah, good, because, like, to flip it back down, they have to play two things, so I guess it chars yeah, that's them. that's interesting. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's okay. It, it's definitely cool design I mean, that it pings for casting a spell when the way to deal with it is casting more spells. Yeah. I like I mean, that. I'm pretty sure it's, like, a first pick, but over a lot of things. But, yeah. Um, and again, another rare that's just good. Yep. I, I mean, I know I'm repeating that a lot, but it actually, like, genuinely makes me happy. Except I see this dragon underneath it. Oh yeah, we're about to, <laughs> we're about uh -oh. to go. Uh -oh. Thank God it's that a mythic definitely. rare. Yeah. This is also one of the few uh -huh. cards I've seen. Um, and it's like fairly costed. Yeah. The uh, one of the things that I was talking about in my other video was how dragons all seem to, or nowadays, you know, at least before Innistrad, <sighs> all seem to, in addition to being dragons, also win the game. Yeah. I think we've talked about For that sure. in the glove club with Tim before where it's just like dragons are already cool and already amazing cards in limited and like yeah. often make the move to construct it if they're really good why do they need to single handedly win the game in addition exactly. to that this makes well, no sense and like something like this it like if you have the board stall it essentially does win the game on its own. Right. So like there's no need for this like wrath you Exactly. Nonsense. Exactly. Um but it's I mean just totally unnecessary. Yeah, it really is. Uh like I would have preferred if this card instead of each just targeted. Oh, I didn't know it was each. I thought it just said fire breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I was like, why is this mythic? That was my first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. It, okay, it, well, I mean, that's pretty good. So, like, the turn after you play this, you're... That's game. Yeah, yeah. You, your turn plays itself. You send all, right, all of your guys cost, immediately. I want this to cost seven now. Yeah. Like, it's it's Shiv and Dragon Like, for, Triple Red is still tough. I mean, yeah, like, Reaper from the Abyss is... Definitely insane, awkward, yeah. But, like, Triple Black is always sketchy. Yeah, but the thing about Reaper is, like, you can play around that more. Yeah, um, that's true. Like, if you know they have Reaper, like, before they hit six, they do some, like, stupid suicide attack, you just, like, yeah, take it, you know, like, don't don't let them get morbid that one turn, and then, like, untap and deal with it. <clears throat> but, I feel like this thing is, like, first of all, if you're, like, really heavy red to play it, it's not unlikely that, like, late game you have, you know, two you extra mountains or whatever. Lands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's game. Then, like, you're just trading up so much that even if they untap and deal with it, they're dead. But, I don't know, I, I guess, like, it's a dragon, right? So you can still, like, victim it. Yeah. Um, hey, if finally, like, a creature that wins the game that you can victim of night. Yeah. Those are <laughs> yeah. <and> far between. <laughs> yeah. And then you can smite it, and you can rebuke it before it... I mean, you're going to trade down your board, 
but like it's a rare, so like it should have or it's a mythic, so it should have good value, you know. Like this yeah. thing, this thing is really towing that line of being like too good. Yeah, but I, agree. I think I think the, the fact mana cost is what I mean. Yeah, I think yeah. makes it, but it's not totally rich. Like if it was four red red or whatever, it'd just be bonkers, outrageous. Yeah, I agree completely. It's. I think it's they did a good job of towing the line. You know, it's not it's not Olivia. Yeah. You know, it's not just like moronically stupid. Why would they print this? And uh, and even though it is towing that line, the fact that it's mythic like makes it okay. You know, they can they can get away with but mythic than they can otherwise. Yeah. Stalker four one with undying. It's just like a bad filler card, I guess. Yeah. It, it's like yeah, a. It yeah, it is. It's sweet uh, sideboard tech against, like, green decks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, four power is a lot. Yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want to be, like, attacking with this guy into most boards. Yeah. Um, Just trading for, like, a mausoleum guard or whatever. Right, it's not right. not that good. One of the things... The, this guy kind of reminds me of Fensnake, obviously, for obvious reasons, but one of the things that uh, I do with my Fensnake decks is that I'll have guys that are aggressively costed power to mana cost ratio. Um, so, like, or, and guys that force trading. So, yeah, rather so than, better, yeah. exactly, so, like, rather than <clears throat> my two drops being, like, interloper, I'll have it be walking dead or whatever. And then my three drop, instead of being riot devils, it's Markov Patrician. You know, yeah. like, you have to trade with the Markov Patrician, or you're just going to lose the race. And yeah. then, like, my Fence Snake's more likely to not even get through, but trade with their next play. Yeah. Which hopefully is better than whatever I just traded for. And then there's also the fact that, like, you can curve into your Banshee or whatever. Like, there's there's interactions with it that are cool. Um, that I think Fence Snake is a card that... It's, like, a really skill-testing card that people don't realize... Yeah, funny. it's it's an onion. I mean, it's, just, it's just a giant cockroach, but exactly. It's at an... the same time, it's like you the way it affects the way you play the game and draft your deck. Right, right. That a lot of people don't think about. Right, and it's a card you get tenth or whatever that can yeah. like really help you define the deck. Be like a game changing. Right, thing. corpse lunge. Corpse lunge is like not a good card, but if you have the patrician into fence snake into banshee curve, yeah, you're then your corpse lunge is insane. And then, yep. if you have like ghoul rage and stuff, eh, enough about fence snake. <laughs> 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 this card is cool, and it ha I'm just saying it has its applications, even though it looks kind of bad. And it's like, a, I mean, we were talking about fling. Oh yeah. Like, having common undying things for fling. This is one of them that'll kill I something mean, significant. Yeah, fling, yeah. That is a very good point. Julian, you're so smart. I know no, you. <laughs> oh my god, puppy! <laughs> it attacks, and... Oh, it's like, um... That's pretty sweet. I mean, just two-headed giants everything. Yeah. That's neat. And then it undines. I like it. I mean, when it's a 2-2, two -two, that's pretty good. Yeah. This thing is, like... It's weird, because... If this were it's green, a skill testing card. If this were green, it would be insane. Yeah, yeah. But like the fact that it's red, just two at a giantning twice, and that's yeah. Game. But the fact that it's red, like none of your guys are big enough to be relevant to get through. You're just like you like attack with this, and you're like, ha! Now you can't block my riot devils. <laughs> it's just like my my Skurz dad cultists get, yeah. doesn't even have to sacrifice how, a creature to do two this turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I mean, it's def it's definitely going to be. I mean, it's appropriate that it's a wolf. For it's going in the red green deck, if anything. Yeah. Speaking of wolves, more puppies. Yeah, with I love how the flavor text text is Olivia. That's the wolves of our valley. Oh, it's Olivia. I have to do a girl voice. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we were talking about how crappy the red creatures are, but I mean, a hill giant's a real card. It's better than Tormented Pariah. It's a lot better than Tormented Pariah. <laughs> I am, I love that, A, we get a hill giant, because hill giants 
are super awesome and are really good for this format and are like basically what red needs are mm -hmm. four drops and uh, beefy creatures. Yeah, higher toughness creatures. Right, but also that we're back at a point in Magic where Hill Giants are good. I remember yeah. like Aaron Hopman, who's the guy who basically taught me how to play Limited, used to say like, you know, you, these days you count how good your decks are by how many uh, three three flyers for five you have. We used to count it on how many hill giants we Dude, had. I know. And I nowadays we count it on how many four mana I immediately win the game we have. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. So like, no, I played a uh, a mirage block sealed deck yep. in Moto, and I I built my deck and it was like five hill giants. And some gray ogres and like one good rare. Yep. And I was like, God, this deck sucks. And like and a like shock. A field. <laughs> I played three rounds, just annihilate everyone. <laughs> yeah. And everyone, everyone that played against me, they're they're just playing like two ones, nothing and... but two ones for three and four, and it's like, wow, I didn't realize how yeah. like, insanely overpowered hill giants yeah, were at a, this time. A three three is. But I had, huge. I had like five or six hill giants. Yeah, that's all. absurd. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> It's like completely ridiculous by that, by those power standards. And I'm glad we're we're getting back to a days, point like that. You know? Yeah, they just don't know how good they have it. Scorch the fields, kill a land, do some damage, whatever. Dude, the art is way more epic than the actual. Oh, that's a dragon. It does yeah, dude, the art's insane. Yeah, that art is pretty awesome. That deserves a better card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How dare they? How oh, dare they? That should, like... Deal, like, 13 damage uh, to yeah, something. to their team. <laughs> <laughs> to their team. Dude, look at... That field is just gone. And the dragon is just enormous. Yeah. How does that deal one damage? <laughs> it should, like, Armageddon them and deal 13 to all their creatures. Yeah. <laughs> and you get a 5-5 five five dragon token. Oh, all your corn's gone. And your children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, it's a hard life, man. If only the, uh, the... God, I was going to make a Skyrim reference, but I forgot what the thing is called. The Dragonborn! God! I can't believe I blew it. That's all right. I could have got so much nerd cred. <laughs> DJ Wee would have been... I know, right? He would have linked My new best friend, DJ Wee, Twitter. and I could have had a good laugh about it. <laughs> uh, whatever. All right, shattered perception. Uh, windfall flag. Well, Teleria wins. Or er, Teleria wins, not windfall. Yeah, it's pretty good. Dude, wasn't that card like banned and extended? Teleria wins. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. It's flashback. I... I, it was. I think it was like whether it was banned or not. Um, when it was really good was when like the original Dredge had just come out. Yeah, probably. So, like... Like, when Ravnica came out, wasn't it when, uh... Micro on the GP... Yeah. Did that deck have Tolerian wins, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember I don't if remember. he did, but, like, that that <laughs> era is when Tolerian wins was really played. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool card. Somebody will find something like, to do uh, with that it. old thing. It's got bees in it. That's what it is. <laughs> it's, got, it's full of bees. <laughs> Talons of Falconrath. I like these flash auras. They remind me of the, uh... The champion or the Kamigawa ones. <clears throat> I don't know what you mean. The Ravnica one? No, I'm talking about the Kamigawa ones, like Serpent Skin and oh, sure, 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 uh, what I was it? That Mystic like Restraints skin. and yeah. there was a black one that like drained and gave Regen, Blessing of Leeches, or something like that. I don't know. I like those cards because they're like yeah, combat cards, tricks that are in its sweet in the late game. Yeah. And you're like, if you have one more creature than them, and they're at eight or whatever, yeah, they lands, then... If it's then you that is. That game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think this card's <laughs> great, but, like, it's, it has its applications, and I like this that this effect exists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... The fact that you have to play around. Yeah, it's another, like, stupid thing thinking. that you have to consider. Which I like stuff like that, because... That, like, because I do consider those things, right? So that, like, that's how yeah. I can get an edge against people that don't consider things like this. Maybe that's just, like, greedy, but I like that stuff like this exists. 
Mm-hmm. Torch Fiends. Pretty cool. Dude, Hearth Kami used to be a card that was played. Yep. <laughs> and now it's just... Hearth Kami was also, like, played with the Jedi, best... Yeah. yeah, the best artifact that's ever existed in the modern era was... That wasn't immediately banned. Like yeah. Clamp. Yeah. But, yeah, this thing's cool. I mean, like, White gets Silver Chase Fox. I was surprised that this didn't wasn't printed alongside it, you know? Out. Yeah. But it's cool. We We're, got Silver Chase Fox and... I guess the... the me and white and that set didn't cost anything back. Yeah. But the fox does. The, uh, they kill Kami like, of Ancient Law and Pearl Unicorn. Yeah. Those cards were good too. Yeah. Were. Were. Uh, Rack with Madness. Oh, that's cool. It's like an awkward removal spell. Yeah, it's like, it's like Kiku's whatever. Yeah, yeah. It kills... The, it, it, it's awesome that they did that they they must have known that this card or that a bunch of things that like fight itself and each other were, were coming because like s look at all the utility creatures almost all of them don't kill themselves with this yeah like priest and the civilized scholar yeah um yeah that's true a civilized scholar doesn't uh yeah so that's really cool and I think that the fact that this doesn't kill <coughs> utility creatures is is like a good thing. I don't. It's like I, I think it kills a lot of bombs too. As yeah, enemy. for sure. The, it oh. kills like this dragon. Kills Olivia. Kills Grim Grin. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> on a good day. Maybe Grim Grin regenerates, doesn't it? No. Doesn't it? Sacred. Oh yeah, yeah, it does kill that. Yeah, the, you're thinking of the uh, the new one, the oh, yeah, the yeah, new the Olivia, new. the four one flyer or whatever. Yep, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. And that wraps up red. They got all the way to W in red, and the other two, or two of the other three, or maybe all the colors, they like stopped at T. They were just like, <laughs> we're done. Those letters, that's it. Yeah. So how many letters we got? Eighteen. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> Let's call it a day. We're close. Wrap it up, or head into the bars. That's that's what I think about R and D. <laughs> no, it's karaoke. Not well. I mean, same thing. But. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that's red. That is. That is. Thank you, Julian, for joining us. Oh, it was a pleasure. Tomorrow. As always. Oh yes. Tomorrow, I'm gonna come again. We're gonna do red and other. Which is multicolor or what did I say? Red. It yeah, just did red. We're gonna do red again and it's it green. Run it back with someone else on Skype. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that, you know, maybe a little smarter, a little about. taller, a little more handsome, <laughs> better at dodgeball. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. So Cool. I'm excited. Do you post these on your YouTube channel right away? Yup. Dude, I should watch them. I know, right? I didn't even know you 